Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing one major part of chess and that is the end game. Now in the end game, most people associate an end game with something that comes from the opening and the middle game, which is true. But a bunch of people think that the end game is the hardest section to play. Now that might be true for some of you, but if you get the correct strategies and guidelines and how to play each position correctly, then you're going to be good. Now today I'm going to be talking about one critical endgame strategy. This endgame strategy has a broader term for it, but I would call it the wall. Now before I dive into this video, I've been, had a lot of changes for my channel so far. So I'm changing the layout, I'm changing how I'm presenting my views. So if you think that these layouts are better than they were used to before, feel free to leave something in the comment section to know for me to know how I can possibly improve my content and my style. But let's dive into the content now. So today I'm going to be sharing the wall as I just said before. Now what is the wall? Well, compared to what I've just told you from the name, the wall is a wall and that's what we have in this position at first sight so the definition as I would put it as the wall technique because it isn't in any formal books but it's such an important strategy I would define a wall technique as an a an area controlled by a group of pieces that allows the opponent's king no freedom to move into now this might be a very dumb definition at first sight but let's get to it so as you can see in this first position, both the black king and the white king can only access these squares. So highlighting in squares, they would be here, all of these here for the black king, and all of these for the white king. And as you can look closely, you can see that I'm missing the middle two files, rank, rows, I mean, ranks I mean. And why is this exactly? Well, because the fourth rank, if the king comes, the king cannot go on any of these squares. That's for sure. So the king cannot go on any of these squares. All of these squares here are controlled. So why are we going to define this as a wall position? Because literally, these squares over here, like all of these squares on all of these sides, you can see that this white king is never going to reach. It cannot reach these squares anywhere without bumping into one or two obstacles. With that being said, this is a very simple wall position. There's no meaning to it because both sides have their kings completely in prison. So this will obviously be a draw. So why am I starting with this position? Well, next we have a very well known position of how white gets in stable drawing position. So, this is our next position. As you can see, it looks like the black has a queen for a bishop and knight. Normally, when a bishop and knight are not, are not together and they're scattered around, black has very good winning chances. And I can put a sample position later, but not in this video. This video is specifically for studying the wall. Now, where's the wall in this position? The wall here is against black's king. The bishop controls e4, e2, and g4, while the knight controls e1, e3, f4, and h4. As you can see here, here's a wall. So we ask the same questions. Which king is being walled against? That would be the black king. Which squares can a black king not access? These nine, in the bottom corner. And as you can see, that's where exactly where white's king is. So how does white proceed in this position? White should possibly play the move bishop e4. Now the move bishop e4, it seems like it releases these squares for now, but that's not a big deal because black's king cannot penetrate. So what should white black do in this position? Well, one sa sample idea might be to restrict the bishop. The bishop can just hop back to f3. And let's say that black brings his king. We can still just move the knight, allow the black king to advance, and as you can see, no big, well, knight f4 doesn't work. That's a knight blunder. But let's just say we bring our bishop all the way to a8. And let's say king f5. And then bishop f3. So as you can see, now we have this very standard position. The bishop is on f3. 
and there aren't many pro possibilities that black can go. The wall is still here. So let's say that black wants to try to penetrate on f4. Now he needs to put white in the zugzwang position. Now in case you guys don't know already, a zugzwang position means you're forcing your opponent to move, but your opponent has no good moves because all your opponent's pieces are on their strongest positions. In this case, the bishop's best position is f3, the knight is on g2, and the king is on g3, slash f2. It depends. So for example, let's say that black plays move queen e5 check. In this position, king f2 has to be played. And let's say the black plays move queen d6 here. So here, how should white proceed? Because white's in the zigzag. His bishop is in the best square possible. The king is in the best square possible. And the knight is in the best square possible. So which piece should white move in this position? Now, this is just uh, any regular position. There are multiple moves that work. But just think about one position one move that works okay so if you thought about one position that works great so there are multiple moves in this position in my opinion i would play the move bishop d5 just because it looks cool because it doesn't compromise anything and if you take there's the move knight e3 and if you try to swindle it out of queen c5 we just play the king g3 to f4 so in this position, just remember that the king stays on g3 and f2 for the entire game. And sooner or later, the bishop's coming back to f3. So bishop d5 is a stylish option though. We don't have to play that. We can just give a check. And after knight h4, if king f4 is played, then we just bring our knight back. And as you can see, after this wall over here, you can see very clearly, the reason why white never falls into a zugzwang is because there's the second wall. And this second wall, well, h3 isn't protected at the moment, but it would be when the king's on g3. But this second layer wall lets white to survive in this position. However, let's take, let's look at a different position. So say queen d6 is played, and then let's say knight, bit, not bishop d5, let's say knight e3 is played. And after king g5, the knight comes back to g2. In this position, after black plays the move queen e5, here, what should white do? Alright, so I hope that you guys took some time to think in this position, because now, it's a lot harder for white to play. So, because right now, for example, if white played the move knight e3 again, now all of a sudden, this is really bad for white. Firstly, king h4 can be played. And after king h4, the king's coming into h3. And although this position isn't too bad, and I'm not playing the best moves for black right now, but I'm just saying how this works. If knight g2 is played again, for example, here, king h3 can be played. And now all of a sudden, if black's not, white's not careful enough, white's gonna lose this position. If white plays knight e3, and then black plays queen g3, after king e2, something like queen g6, and as you can see here, white's still gonna stay alive, but now he's gotta break open the wall. And all of a sudden, as you can see, look at how many open squares there are now. And look how more dangerous white's king is. So I'm not saying that I just played the best moves for black. I'm saying that black, by bringing the king to h3, has destroyed white's wall. And we don't want that, because we want an easy draw in this position. So, back to king g5, queen e5. We want to hold this position. And yeah, and just mentioning back here, so in king h4 wasn't the best move in this position. The best move here would actually be move queen d4 because queen d4 pins the knight to the king. Now king f4 is threatened, winning the knight. So white has to play move king e2. And now the move queen b2 check can be played. And now if white plays king f1, because white still wants to try to keep his wall, right? Then all of a sudden the move king f4 is able to become. And here, as you can see, Black, oh, white's going to be dropping something. So, that's why after knight g2, queen e5, we can't move this knight because the king's going to come to h4 to h3. However, as you can see, when the king is on g5, the king controls f4, g4, and h4. Notice when the king was on f5, the e4 square was still controlled. Because now the e4 square isn't controlled, white has the option of playing the move bishop e2. So I hope that you spotted this move. The main reason why this works is that white still holds the same wall against black's king. 
And if the king comes back to f5, now the king's threatening can come to e4. Now you just bring your bishop back. And after these moves, there's really nothing that black can do to break open this position. So let's try to orient this the other way. That way you get your cognitive skills fired up. After queen c5, king g3, king e5, knight f4. Well, king d4 doesn't work in this particular position, so let's just bring king all the way back so there are no tricks. Knight g2, king d4, knight f4. Well, knight f4 doesn't work in this particular position. I, I hope that you see why. Hint, remember the queen d4 from the last game. So, after king d4, knight h4, king, well, yeah, king e3, knight checks, king d2. And in this position, with the same logic, what do you think you should play here as white? And again, with the same logic, now the king controls these three squares. The knight controls these two, so we want to make sh what the knight controls these two. So now we want to make sure we control this square with the bishop. And thus, bishop g4 should be the best move in this position. And there's a wall. Now, in case you guys didn't recall this, the main reason why knight f4 doesn't work in this position is because now black has the same trick with the pin. And after king g4 now queen g8 can come and after something like king h3 king e3 picks up a piece and now white's busted no no how symmetrical this position is with this position it's basically just oriented 90 degrees so we come back to this position from all the way to the start and this is how with this wall over here white is able to survive this position quite easily he just doesn't even make his mistakes with knight e3 knight f4 and allowing black to pin him Okay, so we've just discussed a few draws, but you might be thinking right now, how is this useful in an actual endgame? Like, what can I use this method to play against? Well, in case you haven't thought about it already, there's one major endgame that has haunted so many players because they just can't win it. And it's not the knight and bishop, mate, that doesn't require it, but it's probably just slightly less harder to win. And that is the queen versus rook endgame. Now, the queen versus rook endgame is a big bummer for the player who has a queen that can't win. Because you feel like that you're going to win, the books tell you that you can win, but you just can't win because you don't know how to. We're going to use the same methods that we learned this game, in this video, and that is learning how to use the wall. Now, what's the wall in this position? The wall in this position is against a white king. Where is the wall? The wall is on one of the ranks, so the white king isn't able to access any of these squares back here. Now this is a really simple position that uses a wall, and if black is able to keep this wall up, then there's going to be a 50 move rule. So this position right now is a position that white really desires. White wants these four pieces in this particular position such that if a knight started on one of the pieces, it can hop to all the other pieces. Whoops, 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 it's not working. All right, so basically if there was a knight on a position, it could hop to all four of the pieces without landing on the same square. Now, I'll tell you why this works after we discuss this position, but I'll just show you how white can convert this position. How does white break this wall? Well, firstly, queen c7. This one, if black plays king f6, then all of a sudden the wall is broken. So black wants to play move king f8. Now in this position, we play king e5. Now, if white had one more move in this position, white would play the move queen d7, which forces the black into that awkward position, as I said before. However, after king e5 in this position, black wants to avoid that position, and he can play king g8. Now, white can play king f5. Now, black's best move in this position is just to sacrifice this rank and drop back to the 7th rank. But, for example, let's say that rook h6 is played. Now, as I just discussed before, what should white play in this position? Okay, if you still have your memory sharp, you know what I just talked about like literally 10 seconds ago. Right now here, white should play the move queen e7. Now these not may not be the best moves, but these are very good guidelines to follow. Like you aren't going to be playing with a computer, so you want to play as humanly as possible. And in this particular position, there is nowhere for the rook to go. So 
The rook wants to stay on this rank. We've discussed that before. If rook g6, king g6. Rook f6, king f6, or queen f6. Rook e6, king e6, or queen e6. Rook d6, queen d6. Rook c6, queen e8 is a fork. So let's just play it on the board. If rook c6, queen e8, fork. As you can see. Rook b6 is queen d8, fork. This leaves only one square left. That square is rook a6. So how does white exploit this position? White is able to play the move queen d8. After move king g7, queen d7. Now, if king comes to the back rank, then queen c8 is going to be a fork. Here's an example. Thus, the king has to come to h6. And after king comes to h6, white plays the exact same move, queen c8. Now, this wins on the spot, because white has a double attack of queen h8 mate and queen takes a6. This forces black to play one move, that's rook a5 check. And after king f6, the rook cannot come to a6 to check, the rook cannot come to f5 to check, and queen h8 and queen h3 are both mate threats. So if king h7 is played, I can check, take the rook. If king h5, queen h3, mate and one. Otherwise, queen h8 is coming, and that's going to be mate. So that's how we just broke the third ring six so one. We got black into this particular position, the knight positions here, and as you as as we just saw, this was impossible for black to defend. So let's talk about white black's best move in this position, which was right here. Black retreats. Now in this position, we want to give a check, and after king h seven, right now our main goal is to try again to that same position, which is probably the easiest way to win. So in this position, there are a variety of moves, but let's play the move queen e8. The main reason why we want to play queen e8 is this doesn't work because the king is on h7, but this move, which you can solve by calculation, covers the f7 check and covers the g6 check. You can just use a bit of calculation to see that king f6 is not the best move in this position because in this position there's rook g6 check, and the king has to come back because if the king go, because if the, whoops, if the king goes to f7 in this position, we just check again, we just check again, we just check again, and this is going to be a draw. So in this position, after king h7, instead of playing the move king f6, we play queen e8 first. The rook cannot come back to the same rank, so we can draw the new wall. The new wall is, this is the rank that's covering, and only the back rank is covered. Nevertheless, if white does not play carefully enough, this back rank wall defense is still going to be sufficient because the king's going to come to the back rank. However, more or less, this is going to be a much easier position to play against. So, in this position, for example, the rook is stuck, right? So if king h6 is played, there's a very good sequence. Queen h8 check, forces rook h7, queen f6, forces king h5, queen g5 mate. So king cannot go to h6, which means the king cannot move. So now, black has a few rook maneuvers. So black can play the move rook g6, for example, rook g2. Then we can play the move queen e7 check. And after the move rook g7, queen h4 check. After the move king g8, we can play one one of the like base filled or moves. So we will be covering the filled or position soon. But in this position, white should play the move queen e4. Now this might seem very weird at first sight, but this is how you're supposed to get into the field door position. And as you will see, there is a very clear cut plan actually, and that's to bring this king to h6. Notice that rook g7 and rook h7 will be covered by the queen on e4. So for example, here black plays move king f7. We can play the move queen d5 check. And after the move king e7, we can play the move queen c5 check. So king e7 is impossible now. King After king f4, we can play the move queen c4 check. You'll see why we're doing this. And after king e7, we move queen h4 check. King f7 is met by move queen d8. And now, as you can see, we're getting into another zigzag. Now the rook has to move. So after rook e7, now black and white can finally convert this position by playing the move queen d7. And after king g8, because the king needs to protect the rook, queen e8. And after king g7, queen e7, king g8, rook, queen g5, rook g7. Queen d8 check. Well, we have queen d8 check is we're going backwards at this point. Uh, let's see. So, let's see. Alright. Yeah, so in this particular position, 
where Rochi 2 has just been played. In this position over here, we can do better. So, yeah, so let's see. So, in this position, instead of playing the move queen e7 check, let's play queen f7. Now, if the move rook g7 is played, we can play queen h5 check. After king g8 here, white has to move queen king f6. Now this one, so yeah. Sorry, my analysis got a bit, I get a bit messed up. So, let's just delete all of that. And now, alright, so now everything's cleaned up a little. So, after queen e8, Rook g2 has to be played and here, queen f7 check instead. We're not playing queen e7. Queen e7 was a waste of time. And here, uh, if rook g7 is played, it's not the best move anymore. But if rook g7 was played, then queen h5 check. After king g8, king f6, we reach a filled door position. Now, wherever white black moves the rook, it's going to be captured. So, firstly, the rook cannot come to any of these squares. That's first base. And here, obviously. So let's just go through each of these continuations. If rook d7, queen g4 check. That's an easy pickup. If rook c7, we have the move queen d5 check. Now after king h7, we have the move queen d3 check. King g8, we have queen g3 check. Now c7, rook gone. If rook here is played, we have queen d5 check. That's an easy pickup. If we have rook here, then queen d5 check. King h7, queen h1 check. King g8, queen g1 check. Now the rook's gone. Now, if you guys are thinking that I'm going a bit too fast and you can't remember all these, don't worry because these are easy to calculate over the board. And you can also experiment because they're never ever going to be losing. So after king f8, if the rook comes to g3, then there's queen d5. After king h7, queen b7, king h8, queen b8 check. And that's a pickup. If in this position rook g2 is played, then queen d5 check and you take it. And finally, the hardest to play against, which is rook g1, because it's the longest line. Queen d5 check, king h7, queen b7 check, king h8, queen b8 check, king h7, queen a7 check, and picking up the rook. So as you can see, in this position, also known as the Philidor's position, there's no way for the black rook to move out of danger, and thus black is losing in this position. So that's, that's basically a nutshell. Now, you might be thinking, we start off in this position, which is very good for white, because we're starting off with our pieces already in this knight formation, so it makes it so much easier for white. Okay, so if you think that way, then let's hop on to a starting position. Let's say that black's rook and king are already in the center of the board, while white's queen and king are back here. Well, firstly, there's a check from the rook, so let's just start off with king of two. Now, black can try to hold this 4th rank, but that's almost impossible, as you'll see quickly. So after rook f5, king g3. So let's just say rook d5 is played. Now we can immediately break the defense just by playing move queen b3. We just need to do one pin. And after king d6, queen b6 check, king e5. In this position, after queen e3, king d6, king f4. Now this rook has to retreat. Because if the king moves away, then kings, then white kings can come to the center. For example, after king c6, king e4 has to be played, and now the rook has to retreat. I, we can, we can just look at a horizontal rank too. So let's say that black plays rook c5. Now the wall is thir is the c file here, and these are the squares that the king cannot access. So as you can see, we're using the wall pretty quick, pretty commonly in this, in these positions. So let's occupy this file first, so the rook never comes back. Here, for example, let's say in this position, black plays move king b6. We can play queen d4, rook c6, so the rook wants to stay here. Now we play move queen b3 check. This allows king c7 to be played. Queen c7, king d6, for example. And now we can play something like queen g7. Now this makes, this makes it so that the rook on c6 and the king on d6 are now officially going to try to survive on this rank. So here, the king doesn't want to move. It, it could move, but it doesn't want to. So the rook comes back. Now, white can blame the king of 6, forcing the king to go back. Queen 7 check, king c6, king c4. Again, this forces the rook to come to a6. We do the exact same strategy. Queen here, queen here, king here, 
King comes to b4. And now, as you can see, the rook's stuck on the third rank. It has to drop back. Now we drop back. We play queen b6, king b7, king b5. We're inching closer and closer. We're breaking the wall. And now after we move king c8, we're back into this position. Now, because it's white to move in this particular position, we want to get black into this looks wall. So how do we do that? We play queen f8. After king b7, we play queen e6, queen e7, king b8. Here we play move queen d8 check. And after queen, king here, queen check. If in this position king b8 is played, king b6 is an immediate threat. So what black wants to play to move king c8. Now, we could play the move king b6, but as, as I said, stick to the protocol. Let's just play queen d6. Actually, no, queen 6 doesn't work in this position. My bad. So instead, queen, queen d6 doesn't work, but yeah, just play king b6, honestly. And here, the rook on a7 is trapped. And as you can see here, the rook is, well, it, it can play rook d7, but then queen a8 is main one. And, and basically, this is just bad. And here... White can just pick up the rook, and if the rook comes to e7, then white can play king c6. Well, no, king 6 isn't the best, so let's wait. Yeah, so after rook e7, in this position, queen f5 check, king d8, king c6, and out, and now, well, black's just lost. The rook, the, now the rook really has nowhere to go. So let's say rook e7. Now queen f8 is just mate. And if rook c7 check, king d6, and now it's really game over. So as you can see, we can get into a winning position. And even though I made a few mistakes on my part, because no one's really a 100% master at this end game, but as you saw, it's still quite easy to win this way if you know the strategy of the wall. Because black's building a wall. Well, that sounded weird because we're not talking about America here. We're talking about chess. But black's not. Okay, black's has a wall, black's not building a wall, but black has a wall, but although black has a wall in this position, we're still able to break it, because as we discussed in this position, if you still remember, there's this Zugzwang idea that black has, and with the Zugzwang, black is able to try to get white's king off its position, white's knight off its position, and this is the exact same case, white is using Zugzwang to get black's rook off its position, and here black's rook off its position. So that's the first end game strategy that I'm going to show you. It's the wall. If you guys enjoyed it and maybe learned something or learned how to win queen versus rook, uh, please like this video or share with your friends or feel free to comment on feedback or just subscribe. And there will also be a donation link in the description if you really enjoyed it. Now this is just one of my of my videos that I'm going to be doing on the end game because the end game is my specialty. I used to do openings because they attract more attention, but right now no videos are attracting more attention. There's school for everyone that's watching. So feel free to subscribe and support me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.